In this tutorial, we're going to look at ng model examples a little bit in more detail. Uh, we looked at the text box in the last tutorial. We're going to look at a bunch more things you can do with ng model and a bunch of other input uh, controls that you can use it with. So I have created a separate directory here called ng model examples. This kind of is similar to the clock app directory where we have um, index.html, which links to angular.js and app.js. Angular.js is the same old uh, Angular JavaScript file we've been using. App.js is currently empty, so we're going to start filling that in. So I'm going to start by creating an app here, uh, which is uh, var uh, app equals ng model examples. And then the second argument is, of course, an empty array for now. Uh, and I'm going to do app. Dot controller. Let me just call this examples controller. And then I'm going to have this be a function, which I'm also going to call examples controller. And my function will be something that needs the scope. All right. And uh, now, I'm going to create a bunch of input controls over here. We've already looked at the standard input type equals text already. So let's say I have a um, ng model equals text string. All right. By the very fact of me doing this, of course, I need to put this in a controller. I'm just going to use the ng controller on the body. It doesn't have to be a div. It can be anywhere. Controller equals, I believe I call this as examples controller. And then the app is ng model examples. All right. So now with this, I have a controller and the app wired in, and just pairing this input tag, uh, I have bound this input to the scope dot text string, so that when we add value here, when we update the text box, Angular is automatically going to update the scope over here. Notice that I'm not doing a dollar scope dot text string equals an empty string. I did that in the last tutorial, but it's really not required. Uh, there won't be a text string uh, property on the scope when the application starts. But the minute you type something here, the minute you enter something in the text box, that's when Angular says, oh, I've got this new value that I need to bind to the scope. So it creates a scope.textString property and then binds it to that first character that you enter. And it's going to use that same property from then on. So this is all you have to do to bind a text box. But now let's look at some other inputs. How about something like a checkbox? So I'm going to do this input type equals... checkbox and then I have ng model equals have a boolean value here and then I close the input tag and now by doing this I have actually bound the value of this checkbox to a scope property called boolean value right so let's uh, let me refresh the page and I'm, I'm going to open the page actually I haven't um, so this is ng model examples and uh, here is my text box and here is my checkbox but again unless we display this it's hard to tell so uh, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, some captions over here this is a text box tag in front of each all right all right this is better now I have a text box and a checkbox, but I want to display what the scope property is bound to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this other paragraph over here. Make it a div. Inside this I have a paragraph, text input, and then I'm going to bind it to text string. All right, so now that I have this binding, we have the input controls updating the property on the scope. And then Angular 
being angular is going to update the view whenever the scope property changes. So now let's refresh this. Let's type something over here. You can see that the text input is being updated. Right? Now let's see the checkbox. You see here? By checking it, the value has now become true. And by unchecking it, the value is now false. And this is also automatically bound. So in the sense, the model that you bind to a checkbox is going to be a Boolean value. It's going to be a true or a false. Whereas the model that you bind to a text input is going to be a string. All right. Uh, the other thing for you to note is, and this may not be very obvious until I highlight this. You notice there is no value here for the text string and the Boolean value. It's basically empty. This is the default state because like I mentioned, until you enter something in these input controls, the scope property will not be there. When Angular sees ng model, it's not going to go and create the property on the scope. It's just going to wait till you actually interact with that input. Once you add a key, you know, once you, you know, in the text box, once you enter a key to type something, you see, that's where the property gets created. And once the property gets created, then it does add this over here. Uh, similarly for the checkbox, there is nothing here. The Boolean value is not even a property on the scope. But once you check this, it shows up. And now if you uncheck, it becomes false because the property is already there. All right. So these are two controls. So let's add a couple more. Uh, I'm going to create a date control, which is a uh, an HTML5 control, but Angular supports it. And if you're using a browser, older, an older browser that doesn't support HTML5, Angular has polyfills, which, which still let you use it. So I'm just going to create a date control over here, which is an HTML5 control. And call this date input. And uh, the name is going to be date value. All right. Refresh. You see here the date control shows up, and I can do this kind of a lookup and populate the date. And as you can see, the value is a date object. It's not just a string which says nine slash five slash twenty sixteen. It's basically the date object. So it kind of detects that this is a date control, and it uses date values rather than just the string that you enter. So this is very handy when you need date input. But I'm also going to show a, a radio button, uh, but there are other things you can do, other controls you can use, and it's more or less the same concept. You use the ng model. Uh, the radio button is a little bit different, and I'll show you why in a bit. So I have this input, type equals radio, and then let's say I have ng model equals radio value, right? So the thing about a radio is you need multiple controls because that's the concept of a radio. You have multiple options to choose from. So what you would need is a bunch of different inputs with type equals radio. So let's say this is option one and option three. Now you notice here for all these different options, I have used the same ng model. This is because these three radio controls are a part of a single control. I want the user to choose between one of these three options. And no matter which option they choose, I want it to go to the same property on the scope. I don't want different properties that's uh, backing these different options. No matter which one of these they choose, they want to, I want it to go to radio value. And then I can examine radio value to figure out what the user chose. Now, however, I need to tell Angular what value to put into radio value when each of these options are chosen. In the case of a checkbox, it is fairly straightforward. If the checkbox is checked, it's a true. If the checkbox is not checked, it's a false. But in this case, for each of these options, I'm going to need to provide a value. So I'm going to use the value property. Uh, and I'm going to have a number. Let me actually make this an OPT. So it doesn't have to be a number. It can be a string. So I have options one through one, two, and three over here. And uh, I'm going to display that. Over here in the radio value. All right, so I'm going to refresh this. Now here are my radio buttons. I have option one, option two, and option three. And as you can see, the radio input is empty right now. As with other controls, Angular does not create the property on the scope unless you use the control. So the minute I click on option one, 
you notice the value of option one got added to that property. So you see here, option one has the value OPT1. And that's the value that goes into the NG model, which is the radio value. So as I switch to option two, it's the same scope property that gets updated with this option. And option three, it gets the same scope property that gets updated. So by looking at this one scope property, I can figure out which of the radio buttons were selected. All right, so this is NG model in a nutshell, but before we wind up, I showed you earlier about the on click attribute and how that will not work and Angular has an NG click. Similarly, you have an attribute called on change, which triggers when there is a change in the input text box and that will not work with Angular. So you have an alternative directive called NG dash change. Similar to on click and NG click, you have on change, NG change. So let's say I wire in an NG change equals text box change, right? So this will actually lead to Angular calling a method when the text box changes, right? Anytime I type in something or I press the backspace or anything like that, right? The value of the text box changes, the ng change properties method is called, right? So ng change is bound to this method. So it's gonna do a scope dot text box change. So I'm gonna wire in that uh, method now on the scope. So I'm gonna have a dollar scope dot text box change as a function. Just printing a message here, but this is basically how you wire in a function to uh, a change handler. So now I'm gonna save this and uh, refresh. Now when I type in something, you notice here, the console statement got triggered. Anytime I type something, there are new console statements that are being triggered and doesn't have to be a new character. I can press backspace and that also triggers that change method to be called. It's a handy, handy method. Um, the other thing that I want to leave you with is you don't have to have an ng model bound to just one input control. You can have the same ng model bound to multiple input controls and uh, I don't know why you would want to do this, but you can actually have a bunch of text boxes which are all bound to text string, right? It's the same model property. It's the same scope property that's backing multiple inputs. Now, what happens when I do this? I'm going to refresh the page and you have a bunch of text boxes. Now, no matter where I enter a key, you notice all those text boxes are automatically getting populated. The reason this is happening is when I type something in one text box, it updates the scope object. And the scope object is actually the NG model for these other text boxes. So the Angular framework is going to update the value of these text boxes to the value of that scope object property, right? So this is two-way binding. So this is what's happening. So uh, this is actually really cool again to uh, demo. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's basically Angular doing all this stuff without you having to do a whole lot. Just bind it to the same property and then wherever you're using the property, either as ng model on an input control or ng bind using the Angular expression, Angular takes care of updating those controls. So there are some concepts of uh, input that we covered in this uh, in this tutorial. Uh, I definitely encourage you to play around with these uh, controls and also look at the Angular documentation. There's a lot more you can do with this.